me to film. What is it? Well, uh, first of all, since there's no soundtrack area, so I'm going to sit around with that. Uh-huh. Either way, <laughs> to, uh, you have to make sure you keep the orientation of the film correct on the reel. So that when you load it onto whatever projector it's going onto, uh, is always facing the film in the top position for you without having to, uh, like in the satellite phase, turn the reel over to cover up your mistake. So that which could lead to two things. It could lead to uh, the reel possibly, that the reel happens to be one of those uh, family, you know, exaggerated compared to some of the other reels that might rub on the projector mechanism. Oh, yeah. So you might think, ah, well, I can get around this by just turning the reel around. But what if that reel is meant? It might hit on something, and then you got to come up with some way of keeping the reel on the shaft, even if you space it out, to keep it from coming. And those are some of the adjustments you've had to make. But, but getting back to the, the rewinding, one of the first things is the heads and tails have to be clearly marked which is inboard and outboard because there's no sound tracks. You can tell in the middle of a reel right. if it's inboard or outboard. That's marked by, by having placed a magic bar to mark the line along the edge that's supposed to be indicating that play, uh, the sound track if there was a sound track or the edge that should be kept closest to you in the projector. Right. Okay, and the other... So, and as a matter of fact, also at this rewind machine or playback machine uh, for a bait reason, mm -hmm. that reel on there, the film has to come off the top and that line should be, you know, in doing that, mm -hmm. close to you. Now, if you messed up on rewinding it on the bait reel, right. uh, and you put the reel on there, put it off the top and the line's on the back, then you can make up you don't have to rewind, just put a, a twist, twist in the feed. So that you're you know, going over a series of rollers to get into the top of the paper. And you've got a generous amount of space between the rollers. Right. Cool. Right. Okay, so, so Abel and Charlie are rewound on the Epirad unit with uh, the soundtrack out. And then Baker is in, right? Uh, or is it, is it the opposite? Just the very first. If you put the reels, if you're winding on the yeah, yeah. upper double button, mm -hmm. so the film for either Abel or Charlie purposely is to put the reel on. It's mm -hmm. going to be the tape of the reel that winding on the film onto. Hollywood. I'm sorry for the interruption there. But Hollywood. Steal the show. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to purposely put the reel on for Abel and Charlie on rewind it right. so that what it says on the side of the reel, in effect, it should say if. On the on side Abel. facing you where you're standing yeah. now, and the soundtrack would then be against the wall. That's right. Right. All the way from you. Right. You're winding Abel or Charlie. Okay. Now, you're going to wind Baker. Baker, and then you want to put the reel on. So it really does say out. Out. All the reels I've marked mm -hmm. uh, out or in. One side, one side or the other, you're going to see that marking so you know which way to put that reel on mm -hmm. uh, when you actually go to place that reel on the projector to play that. Yeah. And haven't you marked some reels, Abel, Baker, or Charlie, simply because they play better on Abel, Baker, or Charlie? Uh, I was doing that for a while. Uh, because. Uh, oh, until we get the new reels. Until we got the extra reels. Yeah. The new used reels. Yes. Cool. Okay, so we now know, know how the film goes on the reel. What are you doing when you're holding the film? Tell me, only zoom in on that. Tell me, what are you looking for? Why are you touching the edges of the film and not the flat surface of the film? Uh, so it's not to come in contact with the picture portion of the film. Just squeeze the film gently. And, and I've noticed uh, just recently how, how gently it's gently. If you look right, in here, you can see that I squeeze it in a little, oh. you know, a little curl of light, okay. you know, a reflective curve of light. Let me sneak in there and actually capture that. And it's all the tighter it really has to be. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from that angle or not. Uh, no, I'll I'll probably over. Have, to, have to be more on this angle. Let me disconnect from the tripod. Okay. 
come over here and we'll catch the right. reflection As of the light. compared to light pressure, and now you can see it exaggerated, this, this curvature of light that starts coming in. Oh yeah, I can see the light see? coming with the, there it is, off the film, there it is, curve. Yes, yeah. there's two over the middle, now I release it. Yep. Yeah. So, so you'll recommend you go ahead and put that much pressure on it that it can curl a little oh, bit. About, so it's about a quarter of an inch uh, from the, uh, from the picture edge here. Bending up the right there, okay. Right there. okay. Uh, you don't want to, because the film is brittle, you don't want to put excessive, because not only will it burn your fingers, but <laughs> if the film is brittle, no use in courage and break down this process by turning excessive. Yeah, this is probably the driest film anybody's ever going to handle. Yeah, and you just are feeling for any uh, unusual feel when a splice goes through, or if you feel a nick goes through when, when there is no splice. So you can feel a splice because it actually kind of is bigger than the film. Maybe you, you feel it push it out, and a nick is where it actually pulls in a little bit. You might feel the cutting edge. Right. And the more you rewind and give a real film, the more familiar you are with where they are and what's in there. And, and uh, know that the splice is, is really a good splice and not to be concerned about either. Feels thick or heavy as it goes through your fingers. It's, as long as it's, there's no like air bubbles or loose edges. Yeah. Anytime you're bringing this to a halt, if you want to back up, mm -hmm. do it slowly. Don't, don't. Uh, Never make any sudden action. Yeah. Where you try to grab the reel, that would allow the mass of film to slide around on itself, and possibly cinch the film. Take uh, the time. You got to get an easy way of rewinding it. But once you do slow down to uh, it's real easy to, uh, there's no real to take off anything, you just turn it off that way and back it up very slowly. What is cinching? You mentioned that just a second ago. Cinching yeah. isn't that when you make a sudden stop and, it's, and the film slides against itself on the reel? That's it. Cinching. Yeah. And it puts yeah. the horizontal lines or marks on the film. Yeah, no, I mean, wound too tight. Yeah, it actually form a sharp Z in increasing the film. You can force a fold into the front. Right. And this will be evidenced by looking at the side of the film as you always should at the end of the you see if you see any film that has wound out unevenly mm -hmm. side to side on the reel. Here's a good point. Or also if you see an airspace uh, at a certain area between layers of film that you can't account for. You are, you are intentionally pushing the film slightly against this edge of the reel, aren't you? This side? Uh, actually, I'm, this guidance roller is, is with the spacer behind the reel. Mm -hmm. uh, always, I'm, I'm not really trying to guide the same side. Here. I'm just letting it come naturally off the shoulder and squeeze. So you're not moving the film itself, you're letting the roller alignment keep it just, you it might say a little, it keeps it by itself. Against the side. So, so there's a gap. Make sure you don't pull out this way. Right, there's a smooth gap on this side so all the film is smooth on this wall or side of the film and right. it won't fold over against the reel. And if you look down there, I don't know if you see a half inch of airspace, as long as that's smooth, that's an important thing. Actually, I think the camera can pick up that there's no gap on the one side of the film and the other side of the reel there's a, a variable gap, but the film is all going on nice and even. Now, right now, I've got this heavy duty clear leader going through when it reaches that point. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time, we need to, to check this every time. This, the leader is, is this heavy duty is, is so extra, extra thickness. Right. And that allows you, if you want to go get another reel while it's finishing up, at the same time. Right. We are at go. So, what I'm going to be looking for is for a white mark. Uh, on the be, pulley? To be uh, as, as viewed, viewed by me on this side of the machine mm -hmm. as being at 12 o'clock on this particular machine. Okay, and this is on uh, Charlie. On Charlie. I'm looking for a white mark that's on the pulley for the Salson motor to be at 12 o'clock when I reach the happy combination of the intermittent just completing a pull down and the white mark is at 12 o'clock. Then I would check here on the shutter shaft mm -hmm. to make sure that the white white mark is going to line up with the white mark here. If you don't have that combination of 12 o'clock high and white marks lined up, you don't have it right. Okay. okay. And it's right at the end of a pull down with one hand on the intermittent feeling that cycle. Right. So I just had a pull down and I see that I'm getting closer now. 
there's a pull down still at uh, 12 o'clock there. Getting closer. I'm getting there. Here's, here comes a pull down. The mark's coming up almost to 12 o'clock. And there uh, it pulled down, and then I'm at, at 12. Can you see that right here? Mm -hmm. Now let me back it up and I'll show you that that would be too early uh, if I try to use the, the next pull down. The next one will, oh. will be out of alignment yeah. and by how much? Well, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, There, there it is. There's, there's the, I keep going right to the right setting. <laughs> I just do it automatically. Uh, if I go one too far, let me show you. I'll take it to the next 12 o'clock setting. Okay. Now look. Okay, yeah, it says one instead of 12. Yeah. Okay. This actually is, I tried to rotate this so I could put this mark 12 o'clock, but it was tight on the shaft and I didn't want to force anything. Right. You know, I loosened the set screw, but it needs to be loosened up. So, this is wrong, and I've gone one too far, so I'll back it up and try again here. Well, with no film on it, you can do that. You can back it up. Right. Get it at the end of a pull down. And there's, there it is. Here comes the pull down. It stopped at 12 o'clock. Boom. And, and you can see that it's lined up there. Okay, but I didn't see a mark back here except on the edge of the shaft. You have to come over on this side. To oh, see that. let's do that. Let's walk around and look on the edge of that. You have to come down and look in. Ah! See that mark there? Hello. White mark. There it is. Yep, and it's at the 12 o'clock position. Uh -huh. Okay, on Charlie. Uh huh. And this is Greg Kimball. Greg Kimball, the man who wrote the article on American Cinematographer, inspired John Harvey to, if he could, even if he had to do it himself, bring Hannah West's one back to the public. And what do you think of it now that it's back? Is this good or better than I remember when I was a kid? It was definitely worth it. Well, thank you for coming all the way to Dayton. Thank you for putting all this work in for me. We have the movie going everywhere. Uh, it's John's pleasure and my pleasure. Unfortunately, he couldn't be in the solo club because he's running the show, as always. And we'll put this on the videotape that we sell to people around the country, and they'll find out that historians that 83 documented how great Cinerama was, and the fact that it was lost, saw John Harvey bring it back, and they support his efforts, and we're all continuing to work to save Cinerama. Keep it up. Hard.